Shack of KJ4 BNF in high definition. Now you can view our videos in HD just by going below the player window in YouTube and clicking the small link that says View in HD. Today is going to be our part one of our two-part series on the signal link. Now for those of you who don't know what a signal link is, uh, it's a USB audio interface that allows us to transmit digital modes from our computer to our radio. And part one we're going to be talking about the hardware and software setup. Then we'll jump into part two and uh, operate some PSK using the signal link. So let's get started. Okay, so there's two different ways to set up the Signalink audio interface on your computer, no matter which um, operating system you have. So whether you have Mac, uh, Linux, or Windows, you should always have two different ways to set this up. Um, the first way being setting this up um, as your system audio in and out. Now what this does is set the Signalink audio interface as your primary interface for your operating system. So any sound that your computer may make is going to be transmitted over the Signalink. Uh, this means if you have any kind of alert um, or AOL open and you get mail, um, it's going to transmit you have mail over the air, um, which we do not want. So this is probably not the best way to set this up. Um, however, we are going to show you this way. On a Mac, we're going to go to System Preferences, uh, which is located down the dock, or we can go to the Apple menu and hit System Preferences. Um, this is also located in the Control Panel on Windows. Now we're going to go under Hardware and hit Sound. Under the sound menu, you see three tabs at the top of the screen. We have sound effects, output, and input. Under the output tab, we want to select USB audio codec. And we want to do the same under the input menu, USB audio codec. Um, you're probably only going to have a few options here. Um, as you see, I'm talking to you over a USB headset, so I can't make the choice um, under this screen right now. But you are going to want to select USB audio codec. Now you notice you have input volume and output volume. You're going to want to set these um, to fit your needs the best. Um, you're just going to have to kind of toy around with it and try to suit your needs and uh, get everything EQ'd up um, the way you like it. Now you also have uh, volume controls on the signal link as well. So you might want to find a happy medium between the two. Now the second way um, to set this up is the way I recommend. Uh, no matter what piece of software you're using um, to do your digital mode, whether it be PSK, Packet, um, any kind of digital mode, um, in that piece of software you should have options for your sound in and out. Um, and it's best to set up the signal link through this piece of software. Um, and the reason being is that any stray sound your system may make um, is not going to get transmitted over the air. The only thing that's going to get transmitted are the sounds from your piece of software that you're using for your digital mode. Um, so in essence we could have iTunes up playing a song and being transmitting at the same time and there won't be any kind of interference or cross between the two. Um, so what we want to do is go ahead and open up our piece of software. We are using a piece of software called Coco Modem and it is for the Mac. So once we open up Coco Modem we're going to go ahead and select um, the mode we want at the tab. Uh, in this case we're going to use PSK and we're going to go up to Window and hit Config. Um, the windows for each piece of software you're using are going to be a little bit different, um, but in essence they're all going to be uh, closely related as to how we want to set this up. Um, you've got an input here, which is going to be USB audio codec, and your output is going to be USB audio codec as well. Um, you're going to notice you're going to have a few options here um, that you might want to adjust and tweak and fine tune uh, to best sit. Uh, to best suit your needs as far as how you want to transmit in your levels. Um, you also have a test tone here and the test tone um, will allow you to play a tone uh, to test your levels. It's quite helpful actually um, so you can get the best um, levels to uh, go with your radio. Uh, also our push to talk is Vox and that is correct. That's what we want to be using. Um, so play around with your settings here and uh, get them how you like them. Um, like I said, um, all software is used for radio should have these options available to set up your sound interface um, through the software and not the system. Um, you either need to do one or the other. Um, if you 
set up both you're going to get system sounds through your signal link as well uh, which we do not want to do so um, just be sure of that and if your software does not allow you to set up an audio interface um, and you do have to go the system route be very careful um, because any noise that comes over your system will get transmitted and like I said um, most of these options are the same for a Windows machine you're just gonna have to go to control panel um, and sounds or something of that nature uh, you can also do it through your uh, software suite on the front of the signal link you have a power button, a power light indicator, a push to talk indicator that illuminates when push to talk is active, a transmit level adjustment, a receive level adjustment, and a delay adjustment. The delay adjustment adjusts um, the time it takes to push to talk to stop um, once your software has finished uh, inputting audio into the signal link. So once your software has stopped sending out audio, um, that will adjust when the push to talk deactivates. On the back of the signal link you have three places for audio which essentially lets you monitor your input and output volumes through headphones or external speakers. You have an RJ45 jack to connect to your radio and a USB jack to connect to your computer. The cord we're using to connect the signal link to the radio has an RJ45 on one end and a 6-pin mini DIN on the other end which is used to connect to many modern radios these days. Um, you need to specify what type of radio or connector you need when ordering the signal link so they can match that up accordingly. They also offer an unterminated cord uh, which you can use for special applications you may have. The RJ45 will plug into the back of the signal link and the 6-pin mini DIN or any other connector you've ordered will go into the back of your radio. This end of the USB will plug into the back of the signal link and the other end into your computer. It's not necessary to install any drivers in the computer unless you are running Windows 98 which will require the driver's disk which came with the signal link. One last thing you're going to need to do before connecting your signal link is to set the jumpers. Uh, depending on what type of radio cable you bought, uh, the jumpers need to be set differently. Um, in my case, I have the 6-pin mini DIN, uh, and it comes with a little yellow sheet like you see here to tell you how to set up the jumpers. This is very important uh, to tell which part of the cable corresponds with the radio. For instance, push to talk, power, mic, and speaker um, all have to correspond with the correct pins um, in your radio. So you must open up the signal link and and set your jumpers. Well, I hope I've taught you everything you need to know about the Signal Link. It's a great little piece of equipment. Um, I encourage you to go to their website and check it out. Um, once again, it's very important to check your jumpers. Uh, it's kind of easy to forget about that. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon for part two, which will be uh, transmitting some PSK using the Signal Link. So thanks again, and uh, we'll see you soon. This has been KJ4BNF.